season, the Stanford Cardinals celebrated its seventh national championship as they overpowered the Texas Longhorns in Columbus, Ohio. For Texas, they've been waiting a long year to avenge that loss. And tonight, here in Palo Alto, they've got their shot. Will it be the defending champion Stanford Cardinal or the Texas Longhorns looking for revenge? We'll find out next. You're watching the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. Three spots in the national semifinals have been secured. Nebraska, Florida, and Penn State are in next week in Kansas City. Who will join them? Will it be Stanford or Texas? Let's take a look at some of the highlights from last night. It was dramatic. A comeback win over U Utah for Texas, and then Stanford taking out a very good team, the Wisconsin Badgers. Here's the bracket. Penn State will take on Nebraska. Between the two of those programs, only 11 national championships. Florida, a miracle comeback in Gainesville to knock out the USC Trojans and awaiting the winner of number six, Texas, and number three, Stanford. Welcome, everybody. I'm Paul Sunderland, joined once again by my partner, three-time Olympic champion and U.S. national team head coach, Karch Kirai. And going back to last night, it begs the question about this evening against Stanford for Texas. Yasmin Bedard Ani is the reason that Texas advanced. Will she start tonight, or will she even play? I don't think she'll start, but she is the story. They're not playing tonight without her heroics. She turned that match around 12 kills, zero errors on 26 swings, just bring an absolute heat, especially cross court. And watch this swing on match point, fearless. One of the first to congratulate her, of course, was Lexi Sun, who came in, uh, for whom she came in. And on the other side of the net, Catherine Plummer, Pac-12 freshman of the year last year and player of the year this year. Nobody has found answers for her on offense. She carries such a big load, and Texas wants her to carry a bigger load, make her receive a lot of the serve and have to work to get her points. Those two players may or may not be the focal point, but there will be other impact players. Lexi Sun, who had a fantastic freshman year for the Texas Longhorns. I expect her to cut, bounce back after struggling last night. I'm expecting her to start and have a really solid performance. And on the other side of the net, Morgan Pence, the human highlight film last night. So fun to watch her and how much ground she covers, how much court she covers on defense. By the end of the evening, Stanford was leaving her over half a court to cover by herself. Just moments away from first serve, so let's take a look at tonight's plan for success brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Well, in the NCAA final last year, it was Stanford's big plan to shut down the left sides with a solid block. Texas is left sides, and they have Moretta Lutz back. They don't have Inky Ajanaku. You can see her there in the middle, but they have a couple of other really solid middle blockers. And so many of the sets for Texas go to that side. Stanford looking to shut down that left side attack again in this rematch. And speaking of that, last night when it was Stanford and Wisconsin, a regional final rematch last night, a lot of new faces, particularly for Wisconsin, so it didn't have the same feel. But tonight, between Stanford and Texas, 12 players in total went head-to-head -head last year for the NCAA championship. Here is one of them, Adriana Fitzmorris. She was in double-digit kills last year in the final, and she starts things off. First point will go to Texas in this best three out of five set match. First four sets to 25 points. Micaiah White, who had 17 kills last night in the win over Utah out of Frisco, Texas. First team all Big 12 will go back to serve and are returning. First team All-American for the Longhorns. And there's Texas already trying to make Plummer work for it by contacting the first ball. Legally up into the low scoreboard here at Maples Pavilion if the ball stays on your side. Nice defense to start by both of these teams. Abagu matched up against Plummer. Off-speed shot, and 
That's a pretty good start for Lexi Sun. A couple of difficult swings out on the left side. A good start for Sun and also a good start for the Texas block. Plummer got touched every time. It took Wisconsin a number of swings before they could even get a touch on her, even trying to put three blockers up against Plummer. Texas going with two tonight. Tame Alade off the top of the tape and out of bounds. And Kat McCoy, the libero for Texas, was Johnny on the spot if that ball had been in the court. Good serving run here for White, whose jumper is a little bit of an adventure sometimes. Very nicely done. Nothing adventurous about that. All adventure on Stanford's <laughs> side of the net that time. <laughs> Beauty but and the, the adventure in the eye of the beholder. Exactly. And you can see her trying to go uh, what we would call wrist away. That is hitting it straight down the line where her thumb ends up down. And she's trying to target Plummer down that sideline. So you see her lining up there. Normally she lines up in the middle of the court to serve. That time going more cross court away from Plummer. Nice block again. Chaka Bagu, number 21 in bird orange, the reigning Big 12 player of the year and an interesting story. We showed you all those highlights and I mentioned 12 players returning. She was not one of them. She was academically ineligible last year and it was a very, very tough time. And it was tough for Texas on the court because if she had been on the court in the middle, they could have had Yasmin Bedar Hani out on the left side and probably found more success in that final match. Stanford is finally on the board, and they got there in an unlikely way, a foot fault by Micaiah White. Jenna Gray will go back to serve, the 6-1 sophomore out of Shawnee, Kansas, who knows a little bit about the NCAA tournament, the reigning Pac-12 setter of the year. And Stanford, of course, is going to try to target Lexi Sun and Micaiah White as often as possible on their service turn. And the first kill for number two. We talked about Gray being the setter of the year, and you already mentioned that Catherine Plummer, last year's National Freshman of the Year, also led Stanford in kills in that NCAA championship final with 18. Now the Player of the Year, and a candidate for National Player of the Year as well. Especially if they win tonight. Tight pass. Good block by Shook. And off the edge of the block and out of bounds. That's one of the special qualities of Catherine Plummer. She is standing there with no approach and gets a huge swing on that. Hits it right off the end hand of Ashley Shook, the right side blocker for Texas, number one, nine. One of three significant trees on the floor for Stanford. Yep. Just happens to be their mascot. Look at this blocking lineup right here. Left six foot eight on the line on Sun, and she hits right over her. Smart to hit off the high fingers. We call that's part of the edge of the block that Sun wants to aim for it with a big block like that. Lexi Sun, 6'2", freshman out of Encinitas, California last year, was the National High School Player of the Year. Had a very, very good freshman year. Also made first team all Big 12. And there's Stanford's double quick. They were having a lot more success on that last night against Wisconsin. Tammy Alade, who's had a fantastic season for Stanford, hitting over 400. And then she goes right next to the setter, and then Moretta Lutz goes for another quick, a little a ways, but now they can't run it on this kind of pass. Stanford really struggling with their offense early, and after what they did last night, that's just their third kill on 13 swings. They're hitting negative, meaning they have more errors than kills for first-year head coach Kevin Hambly. Spent the last eight years at Illinois. Went to the national championship match in 2011, taking over for the Hall of Famer John Dunning, who retired after last year. Interesting, Coach Hambly talking about a little different expectations <laughs> here at Stanford. He was like, where are all the other trophies? I see the NCAA titles. Ah, they're just stuck in some room back there. You can't even find anything that's less than an NCAA title, of which they have 114 now. Nice dig by Micaiah White, who's really improved her backcourt play. And then Ebony Wanabu with the kill. Two nice touches. Actually, three nice touches. You're right. Started by White. And when you see Ebony Wanabu hitting that high corner over the block, you know the sets are getting well located. Ball is nicely up. The spatulas are out for Cat McCoy. Good defense again. 
Really good defensive sequence this time, but the six foot eight Moretta Lutz with a stuff block on the outside against number 11, Lexi Sun. And in general, compared to last night, you can tell Sun is being a little more careful with her swings, not unloading quite yet with this tall Stanford block in front of her, and also not finding as much of su success as she would have preferred last night. Right side to Sun, and she's blocked straight down this time by Megan McClure. And this is a line, and this is a, a blocking matchup that Stanford would not like Texas would they want to when you have a six foot eight right side blocker a six foot six middle blocker you want to set more toward Le McClure but she won that battle Lexi Sun having some receiving issues and Stanford taking advantage now going on a little bit of a mini run Texas got out to a very quick start for nothing still on top nine seven in the first here is Morgan Hentz Boy, that set was a little bit back, and Morgan Johnson made good work getting the kill into the cross court. Yeah, that was meant for her to jump off one foot, Paul, but she ended up <laughs> scrambling and jumping off two. A bit of a lucky kill on that misconnect. Here is Sun. Historically, has been a pretty good server. That one looked pretty easy. McClure right on target. Oh. Banging down the line, lots of room on the right side for Moretta Lutz. And I wonder if Coach Eric Sullivan for Texas is a little frustrated. He told us today, you yeah. know what, you can't give her the street to hit at. <laughs> She's going to annihilate it. What did she do there? She had the street down the line and crushed it. That was El Camino Boulevard <laughs> yeah, exactly. right off campus, which is about six That's lanes about wide. <laughs> three on each side, plus an island in the middle. Good touch by Formico in the back row, off-speed shot. That's to the floor in front of Micaiah White. And Megan McClure, this is such a young Stanford team. Last year, they were Inky and the Inkettes. The senior, Inky Ajanaku, and four freshmen. Now those four freshmen have obviously grown a year older, but they now have inserted into the lineup six-foot freshman Megan McClure. And she has played better and better as the season has gone along. Oh, Plummer cuts that into the net, an unforced error. That's the fifth hitting error for Stanford. They should consider themselves lucky to be only down by two. Remember, it took them about three sets last night to get to five hitting errors. It was amazing what an errorless, what a well-played offensive match Stanford had against Wisconsin. Catherine Plummer and Stanford hit 436 against Wisconsin last night. That ball over the top of the block by the six foot six, Adriana Fitzmorris, now a sophomore out of Overland Park, Kansas. An honorable mention All American last year and now elevated to first team All Pac 12. Wanabu, heavy heat and a very nice pass by number one White. And what you can notice, Paul, is when Texas does get a good pass where they can run their offense, they're not yet setting. They came right out and set Chiaka Obagu, Big 12 Player of the Year, a lot out of the gate last night against Utah, but so far not feeding her much, expecting a lot of defense to be interested in her. Down the line again, dug by Rounceville. First contact, oh. anything goes. Cards tell me that ball's got to come oh, up. That has that is an easy play, and you don't need to use soft hands. You can use a hard surface, but just uh, if you're a defensive player, that's what you're in for is to bring a ball up like Han missed that time. White off the top of the block, easily controlled by McClure in the back court. Boy, both teams not only digging carts, but right on target. Lots of good defense, and we saw this from Plummer last night. Her beach background means that if she sees a team really dug in for the sharp cross court, she'll just chip it that high line close to the sideline, but not too close, far enough away from that line defender. Back to Bagu once again. <laughs> Paddles ahoy, but uh, McClure could not keep that ball in play. Jared Elliott didn't like that no call. Micaiah White, remember who got Texas started on a very, very nice opening run. By the time she left the service line, Texas was on top 4 nothing. Now their lead is just one. Uh, 
Uh, McCoy's got to get two arms on that. They get no set out of that play. Made a good read, but not good contact. Off speed, Tammy Alade, the six foot two junior out of Alberta, Canada, was seven of nine last night. Not that many opportunities, but made the most of it. Yep, and Coach Hamley talked about how she, part of the reason she's having such a good year is she is in some ways the fourth or fifth, fifth option. People a little less interested in her, but she's been extremely effective when they can have that pass. And there's an ace in the corner. Brilliant deep serve. And the Texas lead is not only gone, it is Stanford now on top 14-13. And another ace. Wow. Those serves are absolutely perfectly placed by Jenna Gray. We'll step aside. Stanford has erased the early Texas lead and momentum. One more spot left in the national semifinals. Stanford or Texas? University, once again, Nebraska, Florida, and Penn State are all in to the NCAA national semifinals. Here are some notes, third straight appearance. For Nebraska, they won the national championship in 2015, and for Florida, their first since 2003. And they close on a 10-2 run, Karchpour. We were watching that on your phone on the way over. And Penn State, who has won seven out of the last 10 national championships back in. Oh, they, they haven't been in since 2014. What a drought. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> a whole three years. Stanford has won the national championship seven times, as has. Penn State. Overpass and Lexi Sun able to tip that ball off the back row setter Jenna Gray. I said Penn State had won seven of ten. Of course, their first was back in 1999. Thank you, Karch. They won six out of ten. Even if you take that one away, it's still fairly impressive. <laughs> and speaking of that, Tammy Alade quickly out of the middle, hitting 422 on the year, hitting efficiency best in the Pac-12 conference. And you mentioned all those titles. It was in 2010 that Penn State run, won an unprecedented fourth in a row. And setter Jenna Gray, that was the first time that she drove with her mom to go watch the NCAA championships in Kansas City. And they went to a lot of them. And, of course, where are they next week? Back in Kansas City. Stanford is really targeting Lexi Sun right now. And Coach Elliott of Texas has moved her up near the net to take her out of the rotation. Yep. And Sun has gotten way more swings than anybody on Stanford. Hitting negative now already with nine swings to her credit. Off the block and out of bounds. Boy, Texas really needed that side out. But what are the Longhorns' options in that particular situation? If Sun is struggling, where else should Ashley Shook go? There isn't. That's one of the reasons why Stanford was able to come back is if you serve Texas into trouble, the only place they can really serve, uh, run their offense to is to Lexi Sun. Nice pokey. There's a back row set. Dug nicely once again by Stanford. Good block touch and better defense by McCoy in Texas. Back to Lutz one again. Moretta Lutz bringing the heat for Stanford. Good touch by Lexi Sun. She's taking more line on that, but then you see Lutz make a nice improvement. Love the effort by McCoy, but you give Stanford two. In system swings in the same rally, it's going to be tough to stop them on both. Well, that's going to be an interesting call. They called blocking the set. It looked like that ball was certainly in the plane, meaning some of it was on top of the net. I agree with you. It looked like wow. all the ball has to do. Let's watch here. Ooh. Oh, yeah. To me, it looked like some small section of the ball had broken the plane of the net.
Women's Volleyball Championships presented by Northwestern Mutual. Stanford on top, 1916. Take us back to this last call, Karch. Well, what happens is if you want to touch the ball as a front row blocker, part of that ball, just a sliver, has to break the vertical plane of the net. To me, on that play, it looked like it had and that it was legal for Lexi Sun to touch it. Cost Sun and the Texas Longhorns a point, and Lexi Sun, the last two matches, last night against Utah and tonight so far, she has really struggled. Yeah, Texas's two left sides, Micaiah White, Lexi Sun, a combined 14 swings, hitting zero. They got to be happy. They're only down three points right now, down four, actually. Absolutely. Two of their primary attackers throughout the course of the year. Micaiah White is 0 for 4, and Lexi Sun is 3 for 10 with three errors. And here comes the hero from last night, Yasmin Bedart Ani from Redondo Beach, California. Last year, she was a starting middle blocker. And now playing on the left side and a foot fault. We've already had two foot faults, one on Micaiah White, and now this one on Stanford. That one on Morgan Hentz. Autumn Roundsville, number 13, will come on and uh, quickly Bedard on you. This is just because of the rotation. She does not play in the backcourt. Roundsville comes in to fill that part of the part of the role. And the paintbrush there, Adriana Fitzmorris says we'll take that one. Yeah, it was interesting. I was getting the sense that some of the people in the Stanford bench just were, were waiting for Yazi to be brought in to turn things around. They didn't want to wait as long as they did last night if they want to try and respond to this early deficit. Good hard swing once again by the returning All-American senior. Six foot four Ebony Wanabu out of Fairview, Texas. She began her career at USC where she was the National Freshman of the Year transferred to Texas has really dealt with a lot of off-court difficulties with respect to, to nerves and anxiety and an injury as well that forced her to sit out nice play on the slide what's the difference right now Karch? we look up on the scoreboard and Stanford with a seemingly comfortable 22 to 18 lead what's Stanford doing much better than Texas well Stanford isn't even that effective offensively at 242 compared to last night's well over 400 but it's just that Stanford is serving tough and not giving Texas many good swings there's another example that ball wow looked like the same ball that Lexi Sun touched wow, a that... little bit of ball to hit Broke the plane of the net, and Plummer does it legally again. Boy, that ball looks like the same, the that, exact same play. And it looked even like the ball was on, and you yeah. saw Ashley shook that. If the ball is completely on the side of the setter, a blocker cannot legally go up and make contact with that play. So all the coaches, all anybody wants is some consistency, but two very tight calls, and both of them benefiting Stanford now to the tune of a 23 to 18 lead as head coach Jared Elliott of Texas. Wow, if anything, that looks like she wow. reached across. You can see that the ball is completely on the right side of the antenna in the background, and there, yeah, interesting. Boy, that is wonderful work by our crew. Look, it's a fine line, but that's what the officials get paid for. And two very, very tight calls. You know how to solve that, Paul? Just let players go get yeah. anything that's close to the net. That'll teach people not to, <laughs> to pass right on top of the net. Well, you know, in the old days when we weren't quite as nice, if you got a ball like that, you'd go up you and would hit go it. And break somebody's fingers. Absolutely. The setter's fingers. Absolutely. Yeah. You go up and hit that ball as hard as you possibly could. They're not they're not putting their hands up there very often. No, <laughs> they'll think twice about that. NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship coverage will continue with the national semifinals Thursday, December 14th at 7 Eastern on ESPN. For more information on the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship, you know where to go by now. NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Texas siding out at only 47% so far. Lexi Sun, like last night against Utah, back on the sideline, replaced by Yasmin Badart Ani. Her position in the rotation in the backcourt, replaced by Roundsville. Again, up into the scoreboard. Stanford playing on their home court. They are ready. Yeah, Hentz was all over that. Catherine Plummer with a 23-18, now 19 lead. 
Taking a tough swing there. Texas has really been out of system an awful lot. Is that poor receiving, good serving, or a combination of both? I think it's a combination of both. We saw plenty of good serving from, especially from servers like Jenna Gray and Catherine Plummer, two of Stanford's top, but Mikhail White and Lexi Sun having trouble. Off the top of the tape and down, and now Texas back within three, and Kevin Hambly probably thinking about a timeout. Remember, Texas led 4 nothing to start this opening set. Regional final between Texas and Stanford. They met for the national championship last year, won by Stanford, three sets to one. Over the top, good read by Roundsville. What a good bump set outside to Catherine Plummer, who's starting to heat things up a bit. She's taken 14 swings and now with six kills. Set points now, four of them for Stanford. Kaya White tipping into the soft spot in the middle of the Stanford defense. One set point saved, and here comes Bedard Ani replacing Roundsville. Last night, Yasmin Bedard Ani, 11 kills on 22 swings. It was the first time she had played in a month. Must convert situation for Texas. What a block out of the middle. I think Tammy Alade got a piece of that off her forehead, maybe off her face. A facial stuff to take the opening set for Kevin Hambly's Stanford Cardinal, who shook off a very, very ragged start. They had more hitting errors than kills, but the defending national champions, yep, using it all to get the job done. Take the opening set 25-21. Stanford took the opening set over Texas 25-21 and out blocked the Longhorns 3-1. We told you that the tree, and everybody knows about the Stanford tree, is the mascot. There he is. Well, here are the Stanford volleyball trees. Moretta Lutz at 6'8", Adriana Fitzmorris at 6'6", six six, as is Catherine Plummer. And they are all really good volleyball players as well as being very, very long. Stanford, the number three seed overall. Texas, the number six seed. Nebraska advanced over Kentucky, thinking about playing on your home court. Kentucky was unable to defend that. And it looked like the Florida Gators were not going to defend that either. Trailing Mick Haley's USC Trojans 9-5 in the fifth. But behind Carly Snyder and Ramad Al-Hassan, they came storming back a 10-2 run to win it and advance to the semifinals. What resilience by Florida and Carly Snyder after a rough start pulling herself out, leading that team on down in both the fourth set and, as you mentioned, now 9-5 in the fifth. USC actually had a chance to go to 10, but mishandled the ball. Catherine Plummer gets her first kill of the second set as we are underway. These two teams meeting for the ninth time in NCAA tournament play. Stanford, including the win last year, has the advantage with six wins against just two for the Longhorns. Stanford, seven titles like Penn State. Texas has won a pair, most recently in 2012. And another pass, oh, that's a pass from Micaiah White, but she saves it partially due some, to some poor defensive positioning in the backcourt for Stanford. Makaya White, who hits 280 and averages three and a half kills per set, just now with her second on seven swings. Here's Kat McCoy, the all-time dig leader for the Longhorns. Alade calling out what she wants over the top to Plummer. And Alade just held the middle blocker long enough to create a scene. And did you notice she didn't run close to the setter? See how she runs in that space? That's number six in white, who does not get set. Runs to the space and interests the opposing middle blocker just long enough to create space in the high scene for the kill for Plummer. Jenna Gray already has nine aces so far in the tournament. Not an ace, but clearly a service winner for Stanford. 
Now to the quick 3-1 lead over Texas. And that's been a question mark for Texas is how they can handle good serving teams, how, how they can receive that serve and allow their freshman setter, Ashley Shook, to run her offense. That's a much better pass. And they can run what we call in-system offense. But if she's scrambling around and running away from the center of the court, defense gets much easier for Stanford. Chaka Bagu, the All-American and reigning Big 12 Player of the Year middle blocker who just had that kill, has been really active offensively, averaging about seven swings per set, but much quieter tonight because of the passing. No, oh, nice block. Nothing quiet about the stuff out of the middle for Abagu wearing number 21. And we watched them prep for that this morning. Just, you can see Obagu is already shifting over. They know all three hitters for Stanford are in just one half of the court, the left half of the court in front of the setter, Jenna Gray. Oh, good swing once again by Plummer, just sneaking that ball inside. Catherine Plummer at six foot six is such a good volleyball player. Talk about the transition. She was a, coming up a little bit gimpy here. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Big move last year that maybe led to the championship was her move from opposite to outside. Her yeah. parents were a little bit shocked when they heard. <laughs> yeah, they had their weekly call and she said, I'm moving to the outside and they were like, you're joking, right? But Stanford was really struggling in their 6-2 offense with Plummer playing opposite. So they moved her to the outside and lost one early one to UCLA when Inky Ajonaku was was injured uh, but they came back and we got to see them in one of those first matches at the Galen Center and it was like a different team and they caught fire after that tip over the top poked up by who else Morgan Hintz and Bedardani registered the kill against one of the game's best defenders once again in Hintz playing the left back for Stanford and this is the shot that Bedard Hani hit over and over to bring Texas back against a very pesky and uh, well-fought, hard-fought match against, against Utah. Alade quickly to the outside to McClure, dug again, this time by McCoy. And stuffed out of the middle. Alade working on Bedard on eight. Watch Alade number six on your screen. She stopped a little short. She didn't go shoulder to shoulder, hip to hip to try to take more of that cross court away. Well executed move to earn the point. And now the serve earns Stanford another chance. Nice dig by Hahn. And going off speed down the line and out of bounds by Bedard Ani. We saw a quick look at Tammy Alade out of Alberta, Canada. What a season she has had trying, impossibly, as it might be to fill the shoes of Inky Ajanaku. Hit 422, best in the conference, and averaged a block and a half. Overpass, nice touch by Shook to keep the ball alive, and then Texas lets the ball drop. And you can see they're having a conversation about it right now. Chiaco Bagu saying, look, we, we got to get after. We got to get five people on that. Waiting, waiting, and nothing. Timeout called by Texas, trailing here in the second. 7-5. Holiday hoops are back on ESPN next Sunday with a great top 25 matchup. The number 11 Tar Heels are going to be in Knoxville to take on number 24, the Tennessee Volunteers. College basketball next Sunday at 3 Eastern on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app. And you can see Texas now trying to adjust. We were talking about that earlier. Should they just pass with two and take Micaiah White out? You can see Micaiah White standing lower left in your screen well into the corner out of the passing formation and they get a better pass. They can run their offense more off of that, but it's tough to get the ball down on hits. Oh, good high flat swing. McClure gets a piece of the Texas block. Tough to get the ball to the floor against Morgan Hintz. <laughs> well, near impossible. <laughs> I guess that was the, <laughs> quite an understatement. You caught me. I think she's one of the most exciting players in all of college volleyball. 
And, oh, ripped over the top, and Hintz was there as well, and I hated herself with not getting in the way of that Scud missile. And Stanford's not, they're just fine with Hintz coming to poach. She jumped right in front of Catherine Plummer. You ask, you might ask, why is she way over there? Well, because she knows where the ball's going. She reads the opposing hitter so well. Gets the cues and the pattern. Very easy serve. Nice block on the outside by Bedard on eight. Karch, I want to go back to what Texas has done with their reception game. We talked about it in between sets. Do you think that's the right move? I think it is. We already saw them get two better passes, letting Mikhail White not have to touch that first ball and let the passing specialist actually touch it. Joust coming. Nice job by Shook to keep the ball alive for Texas. Plummer out of the back row, right on the sideline. Wow, she just sees angles that nobody else can envision. And sees space. This is a very good and well-formed block by Texas, but she can see the space to the right around one side of the block. She also typically will hit back to the left around the other side of those six hands. Ball set way too tight that time. Good shot up into the block by Bedard on eight. Plummer again out of the back row, tipping to the weak side, stabbed by Hahn. And that's going to be a net violation called against Texas. Morgan Johnson says no. Bernard Ani said, yep, I got it. Stanford on top, 10-7. It is going to be important for freshman setter for Texas, Ashley Shook, to locate the ball well. That last rally, two swings from Bedard Hani, neither hard. She's got heat, but you got to put her in a good spot. And there's a third one, not so well located. Point chance for Stanford. Couple of back row attacks battling one another, and Catherine Plummer now with her 11th kill after what for her was a slow start. She's up to hitting over 350. Yep, and it starts with the defense of Morgan Hens. Look, Stanford's giving her a half of court to cover, and then she starts it. Plummer finishes. Another scoring chance back to Plummer. Off speed out of the back row, not yet. Better set to Bedard on yes. E, and that's the result. Exactly right, Paul. When you locate Bedard Honey, who is not as good as some with her feet, so she needs a, a better, a more precisely located set. But when you do that, there's major heat coming from Bedard Honey. Chance for Texas to get back within two. Hens is there with a left handed stab. Beautiful delivery, very creative by Shook in the middle to Johnson. And a, and a rookie error, what a save by Hentz. But then later in the rally, Fitzmorris jumping with a backcourt <laughs> setter. You want to stay on the ground when the setter's in the backcourt. She cannot attack from above the level of the net. That was a surprising error by Adriana yeah. Fitzmorris. That ball carries just out of bounds. Stanford won the opening set 25-21 after a really good start for Texas. Texas led 4-0, but then Stanford really got it in gear, particularly with their serving and defense and passing. Nice patience by Plummer. Wanabu looking for some hands off the left side, immediately asking for a touch. And we might have a challenge the whole group of Texas Longhorns looking over at the sideline and Jared Elliott is going to ask for a challenge each team gets three challenges per match we're going to challenge touch off the block you can challenge ball contacting a player either at the net or in the backcourt let's take another look looking at Jenna Gray out on the right side you know coach Elliott was wise the players can tell the most, and they were all six were adamant that there was a touch. But as you've emphasized a number of times, there has to be convincing evidence to change the call. It has to be clear, and it has to be 100% conclusive. You have to conclusively and clearly see a touch in order to overrule. This is a very big call. The point on the board for Stanford leading 13 to 9. Oh, it looked like uh, got that right ring finger on the middle blocker there. What a great angle. 
That is really good work by our crew in the truck. Well, we'll see. But all six Texas players were saying absolutely a touch on that. Just to refresh once again, four areas where you can challenge. A touch off a player, either at the net or in the backcourt. Foot fault on the serve. One more look. That one's a tougher angle to yeah, tell. Yeah, ball in or out, which includes up or down on a pancake, if you will. Yeah. And net. Oh, no, I guess there was not wow. convincing wow. evidence. Interesting. The initial ruling was no touch, and it stands. So, so does, most importantly, the scoreboard at 13 to 9. Texas is hitting 196. They hit 314 on the year. Last year in the national championship, they were held to 217 by Stanford. And this is a challenge in this rotation. We call it rotation one with set Texas setter in right back. They're really only passing with two, and one of them is Mikhail White. That time, nice touch on the ball. Nice up by Hens to keep it on her side. Hens coming back to Plummer, about nine feet off the net, dug by White. A good set out to Bedard on knee, and that's going to be a net violation and a break here for Texas. They're trying to get back in contact. Stanford, after again a slow start, albeit briefly, now hitting 254 for the match. Perfect pass on the slide, Fitzmorris. Ooh. And boy, Micaiah White did work there to deal with that set. Really good job getting to that ball by number one. There is Micaiah White. And that's something that every outside hitter has to be really good at. Being good with her feet, and if the set's left inside, she has to get herself there so that the ball's still close to her hitting shoulder. Fitzmorris off the right side, perfect pass by Stanford once again. Fitzmorris now with five kills on 13 swings. Lutz her having a different night, hitting negative 083 compared to last night. And Stanford did, a, excuse me, Texas did a very good job on Lutz last year in the championship match. Nice up. Right on target, out to Plummer, off of Morgan Johnson, and out of bounds. Sometimes it's hard to see the detail, but when you come up with a really good defensive touch, like number 11, Kate Formico did there, everything flows from that, and you get that great swing from Catherine Plummer to finish it. Good turn down the line by number two, Ebony Wanabu. Safe to say, so far in the match, Stanford, in all phases, first ball contact, setting, serving, they're just playing at a higher level than is Texas. And remember, for much of the match last night against Wisconsin, both teams were actually handling each other's serve well, both offenses running at a high level. That not such a good pass by Plummer. But by rule, first contact, just about anything goes. And then Plummer going high flat now with her 13th kill. Yeah, she's one of the best in the business at saving the poor set, not even needing an approach sometimes to find fingers and terminate. Boy, Jenna Gray is really a good server, working on Micaiah White, and Hens was right there like pitcher to catcher. And then that ball tucked down inside Chiaka Abagu. And one of the things I like about Jenna Gray is she's changing her normal service area is out on the other sideline. Now she's serving on her left sideline cross court to try to create different angles and more trouble. And then she'll run all the way across the court to play defense in right back. Is she also doing that to try to get the ball on Micaiah White, who's yes. on the left side for Texas? Really good set once again by Ashley Shook. Wonderful coordination with her middle blocker, Chiaka Abagu. Yeah, that's a blind set, and that's not easy. Abagu coming off the net and approaching behind. They don't often run that play, whether it's in serve-receive or in transition, but perfect connection there. Uh, 
That ball served long, and Catherine Plummer once again will go back to the line. We were looking at some national stats cards and rating these two teams as servers. Stanford had four servers in the elite category, and Catherine Plummer, Jenna Gray are two of them. Look at Catherine Plummer play some defense, but that will be wiped away. A net violation called against Stanford. And that's something a full-time player, an outside hitter, has to do. She has to be able to serve tough, play defense like she just made that touch, although it was for not because of the, the net. Receive, serve, block, hit. All six of the main technical skills in volleyball. Texas going to have a chance. Ooh, the dart on me. Was there a net violation? Yep, that ball was not set accurately at all. And so the opportunity for Bernard Ani and for Texas is wasted. The ball set so close that Ani could, Bernard Ani could not re hold herself back from following through into the net. Very comfortable lead now for the Stanford Cardinal. Looking to work their way once again to the national semifinals. This year coming up the semifinals and finals. Coming up. In Kansas City, Missouri, the host will be the Sprint Center. Boy, and it looks like Stanford, last year's champions, are on their way back to the semifinals. There's a danger to success. It can bring out your best. Or lull you into complacency. You can always be faster. Woo! Texas and take on the Florida Gators, the number two seed, the top half of the bracket, is set once again. Penn State, winner of seven national titles, will take on the fifth seed, Nebraska Cornhuskers. Nebraska was very, very solid so far in the tournament. They lost their first set this afternoon earlier today in Lexington, and congratulations to Kentucky on a marvelous season, and they've got some really good young players coming back. Nice dig by Plummer. The dart on me is stuffed by Fitzmorris. And this is the best kind of block you can form when the ball comes from far away. The only choice, and here comes Lexi Sun back into the contest. The dart on me was unable to give them the same fire, at least to this point in the match, that she was able to last night. Good time to bring Sun back on? I think so. Hints so. again. Plummer out of the back row. Point to Plummer, assist to Morgan Hintz. It is so difficult when you're Morgan Hintz and you dive forward like this. 99% of the time, players will put that back over the net, but she does the extra work to keep it on her side and earn another swing. 3 nothing run for Stanford, looking to add to that. Here's McClure again. And Chaka Bagu off the edge of the Stanford block and out of bounds. Abagu now four for 11. Texas hitting only 213, 100 points below their average on the season. Stanford at 29 and three, Texas at 26 and two, both conference champions. Ball did not clear after a good touch defensively by Abagu. And you'll see Texas is still going to try to rely on a two person serve receive. That's a lot of ground to cover. See if Formico can stress them with that big middle area. That's what she's trying for. And but creates the an overpass. But an absolute brain cramp by the Stanford Cardinal allowing that ball to drop. Yeah, what happened is McClure went off the ball and went to what she thought was her blocking assignment, but you've got to take care of the ball first if it's coming over. Ball set way off the net. Pretty good crack that time by McClure. And another block, Fitzmorris on Sun. Stuff block number four for Stanford. Excuse me, number six for Stanford. 
Texas being out blocked. They only have three. And Texas has been among the nation's leaders all season long, either number one or number two in blocks per. Good swing by Sun. Needed that. Number 11 in Burn Orange really needed it. Outstanding freshman for Texas will go back to serve on the year. She averaged 3.4 kills per set, hit just under 290. Those are really solid numbers. She was first team all conference. The last two nights have really been a struggle. Cross court cracked that time by Fitzmorris. And now seven set points for the Stanford Cardinal. We'll have an intermission, and they could be going into the locker room with a commanding lead over the six-seeded Texas Longhorns. Ball set 13 feet off the net. You don't see Jenna Gray miss set a ball very often, but certainly did that time. Not accurate at all. Still another set point for the Cardinal. Up into the block and out of bounds. Smart shot by Micaiah White. Two set points saved by White in Texas, but still five in the bank. Not the Bitcoin bank either, Karch. <laughs> that one's a little dicey. <laughs> Still can't figure that one out. Good serve down the line. Plummer. Oh, roofed by Abagu and shakes her head. Not this time. Texas getting a number of good touches. It starts with some tough serves down the line at Plummer, and they have to do that from the start of the set, not once the team gets to 24. Three-nothing run for the Longhorns, looking to make it four, and maybe force a timeout. If you're Kevin Hamblay, do you take a timeout? Boy, this would be a miraculous comeback for the Texas Longhorns, and still facing seven set points. Karch, long odds, long odds that they can even this match at a set apiece. But this will, if they win this set, they're going to feel unbelievable. But even if they lose this set, they're going to feel a heck of a lot better about themselves going into the locker room. Kickoff week 14 of the NFL of NFL Sunday with the countdown crew at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. They'll have all the early breaking stories, injury updates, and preview each game right up to kickoff. NFL countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app. Back with my partner, Karch Kirai. I'm Paul Sunderland. Thanks for staying with us and closing out another incredible weekend, a Friday, a fabulous Friday, and a Really strong Saturday. What a performance by Florida. Nebraska looked very, very strong against a team from Kentucky Carts that we're going to be hearing from from a long time with those two young outsides and an outstanding setter. Yeah, Leah Edmond yesterday helping spark that comeback by Kentucky, and they responded well, forced a fourth set, but Nebraska's ball control yeah. just a little too much. And now we get to see next Thursday a matchup in the semis of Big Ten co-champions. When Stanford had seven set points, the crowd was sitting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now Take they're it. on their feet. Taking it for granted. We'll have highlights of all those earlier regional finals for you at the break in between the second and third. Cat McCoy back at the line. It was 24-17. Now it's 24-21. Outside to Plummer and ripped into the cross court. It took longer than Stanford had planned, but the result is the same. Catherine Plummer and the Stanford Cardinal head to the locker room on top of the Texas Longhorns. Two sets to none, winning the first 25-21 and the second also by a score of 25-21. Once again, highlights from around the country. When we come back, it's been all Stanford 
so far. Looking to get back to the national semifinals. The NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. The bracket is nearly full. Nebraska, Florida, Penn State are all in. And Stanford, what, two-fifths or two-thirds of the way there, we're about to find out. Back with my partner, Karch Kirai, and Paul Sunderland. And, and we knew coming in, because we looked at the numbers, that Stanford would have a big advantage in the serve and pass phase of the game. And all of those numbers, which is a big body of work through the course of the season, have held up. They're creating havoc for Stanford. You need to have a great first contact. This is not one of those, and a great second contact. So we're looking at some of, Stan of, of Texas's first contacts. Ashley Shook can't run her offense on those. Then when they do get a good touch, the second contact. Shook is having a little trouble locating two tight sets, and those are automatic, uh, virtually automatic points for the other team. Got to clean up that first and second contact to be able to run their offense. Very ineffective so far when Stanford's been at the service line. Stanford is the higher seed, playing in their home white uniforms. Freshman Megan McClure will start things off. A huge mountain to climb on Stanford's home floor for the number six seed, Texas Longhorns. And there's another serve reception where Ashley Shook could not use her hands to run the offense. It turns into an easy play, an easy transition play for Stanford. You mentioned it before, Paul. Texas only hitting 221. That's about 100 points below their season average. We'll give you some of the statistical leaders through two sets after this particular play. Plummer leads all attackers in kills with 16. Nice play out of the middle by Morgan Johnson. Stanford almost kept it alive. And it started with a great first contact. We saw some not so great ones that time. Cap McCoy putting Ashley Shook right on the money. The setter for Texas doesn't have to run around and chase it down and can run her whole offensive pattern, easy swing and kill. For Texas, it was Micaiah White with five kills. Chaka Bagu also had five. Ebony Wanabu is hitting for a very efficient percentage. Nice dig by McCoy. Good set to the outside, but a better block by Gray and Fitzmorris. Yep, they set up in a, in really in the great spot there. Uh, sorry, Mikhail White was trying to hit high seam, but Jenna Gray just shut it down. Seventh stuff block for Stanford. Texas trying to force the ball into the middle and Shook doing a good job. That ball was about five or six feet off. Right side to Wanabu. Gets her fifth kill now, Karch, on nine swings, hitting close to 400. Yep, they've got to look to get her the ball more. She's had more success than any other pin. And they had that success because the middle blocker for Stanford, Kami Alade, chose to put herself to play one-on-one -on, -one on a different hitter, leaving Plummer alone to defend. No swing from that play. You can't give Stanford lots of second swings, or in this case, third swings. Pretty Whoa. hittable ball. What a long range set that time by Cat McCoy. Agree with you completely, Karch. Texas digs a ball. They don't have any back row attackers because they have all littles on the floor, but they still don't get a swing off a yeah. quality dig. They have to push that up. That second one was pushed up, and then Stanford missed because there's a little confusion. Henson's been taking so much space back there, they didn't know what to give her. Catherine Plummer registers her 17th kill. Last night, Plummer and Stanford were just an offensive machine, and so was Wisconsin. Stanford hit 436 and sided out at 74%, which are both astronomical totals. And Wisconsin in that first one hit 593 <laughs> in the first set. Very well played offensively. There's Ashley Shook out of the dark zone inside the three meter line. That's not where you want to run your offense from. And in comes, in checks in uh, Lexi Sun. What a quality high swing by Micaiah White going over the top of the Stanford block into the deep cross court corner. All the way back when this match begun, Micaiah White got Texas off to a 4 0 start with some good serving. Perfect pass for Stanford. Oh, and right on the sideline, and a net violation was called against Texas. Megan McClure 
the freshman for Stanford has been lights out receiving serve. She sure has, and in fact, that's why she earned the starting position to begin with, Paul, earlier this season, but she's since added tools to her kit and become more of an offensive threat for them. And Jenna Gray does a very nice job of moving the ball around. When you get to play with Plummer, when you get to play with Fitzmoritz and Lutz, even if you're hitting on the outside, you're going to find some open opportunities. Yeah, and she does a nice job of choosing those spots. You don't want to overset McClure when you have a weapon like Plummer. And right on cue against one blocker because of the play at the net. But what a save by Jenna Gray. Really athletic play here. This is not an easy play to make, but she puts that. She takes it from a poor first contact to a great second contact, and that virtually kills the ball for McClure on the outside. Good block touch. Opportunity for Stanford. McClure well off the net. Smart shot into the deep cross court corner. And we were talking about her building more tools. We saw some nice roll shots and off speed from her last night. There's the deep corner. After the heat hitting against one person block, McClure developing that offense even though she was originally in for ball control. Johnson on the slide. Texas is passing better here in the third set. Reason for it, Karch, particularly since they've struggled in that phase. They're trying to use, as you call them, their smalls. And when they have those in, those are their better ball control players. Those are the ones who are going to make the best first. Wow, McClure, what a great first contact by her in response after Texas running its offense. But do you see how she turned away and put her platform way up high and angled the ball right where Jenna Gray needed it? And created a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Moretta Lutz. Pretty sw quiet night, three kills, three errors on 16 swings. Texas doing a good job on Lutz for the second match in a row. Ebony Wanabu showing some versatility hitting out of the middle. And Texas for a few in a row now with a good first contact, that time by Micaiah White. But when you put it within, put it about two or three feet off the net, Texas can, can change the equation. Lexi Sun changing her equation, serving from a different area of the court than she normally does. A serve by Lexi Sun. We were talking about it at lunch the other day, and Lexi Sun was in the USA gym for the first time when she was 14. And even then, you said to me, Karch, she had a nice flat jump floater. She sure does normally. Not that last serve. Nice up by McCoy. Quickly out to McClure, off the edge of the block, dug by White. Speed. And we're getting to see all the Mc all the tools in McClure's kit. She broke that out a couple of times last night. So effective when you mix shots, you don't need to be six foot six Catherine Plummer to get the ball to the floor. And she's earning a lot of respect from Jenna Gray, who's a lot more comfortable in spreading it out to McClure. Tough chance for Wanabu throwing it up into the block, but it's a pair of six foot six trees, and one of the limbs just threw it back on her. I think the mistake there is trying to throw it back down the line. She could have tipped into the court and made Jenna Gray, the setter for Stanford, who was off Walker, touch the first one and get Stanford out of its offense. Texas is passing much better. Nice. Look at Hintz. What a read, and McCoy right back at you. Hints again. Wow. How many bodies are on the floor? <laughs> As we said, the human highlight package all in one play. First one, look at how far Morgan Hentz goes, and then she can go to her left also and almost gets the ball over the net at the end of that rally. That ball roofed, but straight out of bounds. Bang, bang, play. White was all over it. And the reason Hens can cover that kind of kind of distance is really twofold. Number one, she's an extremely explosive athlete. But number two, she has such good eyes. She can read those cues from a hitter and know almost as the hitter is hitting the ball where it's going and if it's going to be hard or off speed. Wanabu. 
registers the kill and net violation. One more thing on Morgan Hintz. Does she have ESP? Because she seems to know where the ball's going before it's anywhere near getting there. Just a remarkable defensive player. She was a multi-sport athlete as a high school player. Soccer, diving, swimming, and basketball. So the diving, maybe she comes by that quite naturally. And earlier this, this year, people in the Pac-12 were actually avoiding her on defense. She wasn't getting as many chances, but we see her getting more in this NCAA tournament. White having to go off speed once again, and Stanford, a rare miscue in the backcourt that time. And that's one of the risks of Hence taking so much space over half the court is that her teammate doesn't know when she should step in or not step in, step out of the way. That time, a collision and a miss on a pretty easy play. Uh -oh. Not a good set that time by Gray. High up into the block, Stanford will reset. And Alade is able to go with a left hand away from Claire Hahn. So far, Texas formulating call a much better response. I think maybe they had to take some comfort at the very end of that second set. They ran a little string of points and showed themselves that they could get a block or two on Plummer, get a dig, create a little havoc across the net. Speaking of blocking, surprisingly, Tex, oh, what a hit. Nothing quiet about that. But for one of the best blocking teams in the country, look, Texas is elite. No question about that. Their resume says so. But they only have four stuffed blocks tonight, and that has been one of their hallmarks. They average almost three and a half stuffs per. And that ball just missed out of bounds by White. After that last kick kill by Micaiah White, if I read lips well, and I don't, but it looked like she was saying, set me more to Ashley Shook. She's been having a little success as long as she can push her up a little closer to the net. Deep serve, and that carries just long, so Texas and Stanford exchange service errors. Very tough serve. No, not at all and easily handled. And the results are very predictable. That's been the difference tonight at the service line. And the best, one of the best ways to tell whether it's a tough serve call is how many feet or inches does it clear the net by. That serve cleared the net by about five feet. It's very loopy. No, no speed on it. Meanwhile, that serve was low and flat and caused trouble. Back to Lutz, into the cross court once again, back-to-back -back kills. And the result, off a good serve, Stanford point. Off a weak Texas serve, also Stanford point. There is Morgan Hentz once again here in the third must-win situation for Texas, tied at seven, tied at 11, and now the Cardinal with a one-point advantage. Plummer out of the back row. Catherine Plummer registering her 18th kill so far on the night. We've come to the media timeout. Teams headed to the sideline. Stanford just one set win away from advancing to the semifinals. Nice swing by Lexi Sun from about nine feet off the net NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship coverage continues with the semifinals 7 Eastern time next Thursday on ESPN for more information go to NCAA Women's Volleyball Championships at NCAA.com good cover by Hintz making it look easy Wanabu snapping nicely over the top. Give you Ebony Wanabu's number. She's been very, very efficient. That's nine kills on 15 swings, hitting about 435 now for number two, the senior. And Fitzmora showing her versatility. The middle attacker hitting out on the left side. You really like her ability to play multiple positions as a volleyball player. They could have her play outside hitter and pass if they wanted to. She could play any of those positions. A very well-rounded volleyball player. 
Texas still struggling with its first contact, and it's leading to transition chances like this for Stanford. Good touch by Morgan Johnson, but Cat McCoy could not follow up. Yeah, the Texas outside attackers, Micaiah White, Lexi Sun, or be it Bedard on knee, are having to take a lot of very, very difficult swings. Stanford at the timeout, leading 17-15. Mentioned moments ago that Ebony Wanabu, one of a number of seniors on this Texas team, will now an informal graduation ceremony because they're graduating their December graduating class. Well, that ceremony took place today back in Austin, and obviously Chiaka Bagu, Kat McCoy, nor Ebony Wanabu could be there. And Moretta Lutz also getting working on her master's degree at Stanford University. How would you like to be recruited to Stanford? And then head coach John Dunning says, we're going to redshirt you your first year. So you get to spend five years here. <laughs> you get your bachelor's, and you can work on your master's. Sign me up. Nice off speed by Lexi Sun. Sun now six kills on 18 swings. If, if Texas can just clean up its first contact a little bit, they can hang with Stanford. Only one point down, but Stanford has been out first contacting them by a lot. There's another. Perfectly located first contact by Morgan Hentz. You do not want to serve the person with the different colored jersey on the Stanford side. And you wonder why Texas only has four blocks, much fewer than their season average. That's why, because they're dealing with a Stanford team that is in system virtually 75% of the time. Yep, and here's Ashley Shook on the run again, just having to set high, out of system. So another transition opportunity and point for Stanford. Catherine Plummer off the top of the block. The offensive star once again for Stanford now with 19 kills. Fitzmorris has 10. Megan McClure is chipped in with six. Alade with five and Moretta Lutz with five. That's how good serving and good passing could just wear you down. A serve up the middle. Stanford now with their biggest lead here in the third set up. 2-0 and a timeout called by Texas. Stanford on top 20 to 16. They won the opening set, the opening two sets by identical scores of 25-21. The football championship series or FCS is the national, it's in the national semifinal round. Watch some of this today. North Dakota State rolled over Wolford in the quarterfinals of the FCS playoff and will host the winner of Sam Houston State or Kennesaw State on Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN2. And then James Madison will host South Dakota State on Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPNU. For more information on the FCS, visit NCAA.com. Home for all 90 NCAA championships. Here's the Kansas City bracket, Penn State once again. Talk about two stalwart programs. Hard to keep my concentration with that gentleman dancing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> but to conclude the thought, who will fill it out? Florida taking a huge sigh of relief. Looks like they're going to play Stanford. And remember, Penn State's only loss yes. this year on their home floor, 3-0 to Nebraska. Penn State looking for revenge, I'm sure, in that one. And it's looking possible very possible that you have the co Big Ten champions a co SEC champion in Florida and the solo outright Pac-12 champion in Stanford unless Texas can get their first contact cleaned up a little more here. Here is McClure we've talked about how she has elevated her game over the course of the season and that has proven itself tonight against the number six seed Texas Longhorns. Another Rough first contact. Wow, wow. Ashley Shook is not using her hands. That's a tough way to make a living. Mikhail White is not going to be able to put the ball away consistently off a play like that. It just puts so much stress yeah. on your side of the court as opposed to all of the relatively easy point scoring opportunities that Stanford has in serve receive. And another pretty easy one. Oh, stuff block by Abago. Chaka Bagu does not want her career to end. Remember last year, she was ineligible because of academics. It hurt her deeply. She felt horribly that she couldn't be with her team. Took responsibility for her shortcomings and has had a magnificent comeback year. Said it was really difficult 
there. They got Stanford on the run a little, and here's a scoring chance for Texas. Good set to the outside. White trying to carve off an angle that wasn't there, and the ball hit out of bounds. A break for Stanford there. Wow, if Mikhail White puts that ball away, it's 20 to 19. And remember the pins, the sideline hitters for Texas who've been having more success. Micaiah White at left front and Ebony Wanabu behind. So two nice choices. But they go instead to Chiaco Bagu, Big 12 Player of the Year. Nice choice. Chiaco Bagu led the Big 12 Conference in hitting efficiency at 401, led in blocking at 1.7. She's going to be playing somewhere in Italy or Turkey or China. She can make a living playing volleyball if she chooses to. 21-19, Han to serve. Perfect pass again. Oh, nice touch. Plummer again. Plummer for a third time. And Abagu on the slide, missed it out of bounds. Wow, what an opportunity. Several. Remember, Mikhail White yep. hit that one from wide cross court the other way. Texas got to be a little frustrated. They finally did the work to create the opportunities. Can't terminate. Jenna Gray already with nine aces in the NCAA tournament. The Cardinal three points away. White turning down the line. Hansel track cracked that down. Must score situation. Abagu again on the slot. Nice. Dug by Hans. On top of the net, there is Alade. Texas got to have it. And missed out of bounds. <laughs> Wonderful effort. Great fight by Lexi Sun and the Texas Longhorns. And Micaiah White can be dangerous from the line. That'll locate this very well. Lutz, what an aggressive set by Jenna Gray. Need to remind people that Moretta Lutz spent more than one season as a middle hitter and middle blocker. And that's exactly what she was doing there. Her favorite set to hit as a middle hitter was that shoot set about 10 feet away from the setter. And now playing opposite the setter. Hits primarily on the right side. Perfect pass to Obaku. Going downtown. And look what can happen for Texas if they get a great <laughs> first touch. Ashley Shook can run an offense. She didn't have to move at all. And Obagu can unload. But they just haven't had enough of that. It makes the job very difficult against a team of Stanford's caliber. Perfect pass there. Alade. Right to the floor at the 10 foot line. The crowd comes to their feet. Match point for Stanford and a trip to Kansas City. Stanford free ball. Do you go middle? No, you go to Marina Lutz for the win. their 30th win on the year. Texas will finish the 2017 campaign with a record of 26 and 3 in their 21 match winning streak comes to a close. And Stanford will be going to the NCAA National Semifinals for the 16th time. 
Texas another spectacular season for the Longhorns and their streak of five straight national semifinals also comes to an end. Congratulations to Kevin Hambly in his first year on the farm and the Stanford Cardinal. They will take on the Florida Gators next Thursday on ESPN in one of the two semifinals. Coming up, Catherine Plummer finished with 19 kills. We're setting Catherine Plummer up right now, but she's going to have to wait just a moment. We'll go to a commercial break quickly, and then we'll come back and visit with the offensive star for the Stanford Cardinal, Catherine Plummer. The Cardinal heading to Kansas City. Presented by Northwestern Mutual. Northwestern Mutual. We help you live life differently. Yeah, Stanford is celebrating with the band, and why not? Where's the tree when you need him? <laughs> the number three yeah. seed Stanford Cardinal moving on to take on the Florida Gators in convincing fashion over the Texas Longhorns. Back with Karch Kirai, Catherine Plummer. Catherine, congratulations Thank you on so a much. marvelous weekend Thanks. leading the way for Stanford. Karch asked you during the commercial break, and but we'll ask it again because, of course, it was a good question. <laughs> what was your focus coming into this match against Texas? Definitely one thing to serve pass battle. Um, we knew they're big and we wanted to get them off the net, kind of make it about the outsides and the pins. So I think we <laughs> did that really well. What are the expectations here at this athletic department? Um, the expectations are to win national championships. <laughs> I think that's kind of like, kinda kinda like clear. that number up there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we kind of feel like we fail the athletic department if we don't. Um, we're hoping to win another one. We're going to Kansas City to do it. So. Two matches away. Yeah. Let's take us back to last year when it was Inky and the Inkettes. <laughs> I mean, it, I don't want to say that it comes easily because your team went to an entirely different level and you were led by a special player. Mm -hmm. But this year you had a target on your back. You lost only once during the course of the conference. How has this year's experience been different than last? I always say that it's good to have pressure because that means you're doing something right. Um, but I think this year we kind of reinvented ourselves, we sped up our tempo. Um, we got more opportunities to find holes in the seams. And, I think that our defensive mentality has just definitely gotten a lot better def on the block and in the back row. Um, Morgan's leading the way with that. Talk to us about your night starting out this evening. It was Texas that got out to a 4 nothing lead, and yeah. Karch pointed out that you were 0 for your first three. <laughs> I was. Um, <laughs> Plummer's struggling. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, yeah, they got good touches. We were off the net with passing. Like that was, I think that was the only time that we didn't really win that battle. It was the very first couple points. But um, yeah, um, just having trust in our system, and we got back. And you have a, a big class that uh, a, a freshman last year spent a lot of time together, a lot of the same classes. Mm -hmm. How has that relationship blossomed now that you're, you've got more experience, all of you? I think it's definitely blossomed in a really positive way. Um, I think we've kind of branched out from each other. We're not taking all the same classes and <laughs> okay. spending every hour with each other. Um, 24 hours a day, no more. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think that our relationship on the court has just become so huge because we're definitely key components. And I think that we've kind of taken on leadership roles that we didn't necessarily have to do last year because we had Inky. Um, and I think we're stepping up in those big moments. And how would you describe that relationship on the court? I think it's just really calm and we have trust in each other. I think you can see it on the court. We're not like a really raw, raw team. We're kind of steady. Um, and I think that works for us because we know that we have to do a job and we do it well. One last question. I mean, obviously there are lots of very good pieces that have all come together mm -hmm. under a first year head coach, but what kind of difference maker is Morgan Hintz with some of the plays she makes? Oh, she's huge. She makes, she sparks our fire. Um, you saw it last night, you saw it tonight. When she makes big moments like that in different parts of her game, um, we get opportunities to score when other teams definitely wouldn't. And I don't know, she's awesome and she expects a lot from us and we expect a lot from her. And, she definitely pulls through a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's doing what you tell her, and you're doing what she tells you. Definitely. Catherine, thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much. Congratulations once again as thanks. Stanford looks forward to going back and playing the Florida Gators, who in some positions can see you eye to eye. That will yeah. be a very interesting matchup as well. And the brackets are full. The Penn State Nittany Lions, like the Stanford Cardinal, 
who have seven national championships. They will take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers and Stanford and Florida, the number two and number three seeds, will face off next Thursday on ESPN. Going to be two incredible semifinals. 11 national championships between Nebraska and Penn State and we talked about Stanford with seven and we're joined now by another special guest first year head coach Kevin Hambly congratulations to you and you told us you couldn't find where the runner-up trophies are and you have eight of them uh, so now you have a chance to get your eighth national championship trophy and if you don't it's all on you then we failed I and mean, that's just how it is so no i mean I, we're excited i'm excited for the kids they're really excited they played hard they've worked hard all year to do this and so um you know just continuing to try to get our goal to try to accomplish our goal it's exciting you, you mentioned earlier this year how essentially you had all freshmen because they were all new to you yeah. you knew to all of them so what's been the big focus in trying to get to the national semifinal in terms of accomplishment with the, the culture well i mean i, I just figuring them out spend a lot of time with them talking to them meet with them once every two weeks and chatting with them and just um, seeing what makes them tick and what motivates them and all that they're different you know they, they got a lot of things the Stanford's a different place where there's a lot of academic pieces to this and there's they want to accomplish things in every aspect of their life and helping them manage that is I think a big part of this Kevin in today's volleyball yeah. everybody's physical everybody at the elite <laughs> level is very physical as is Florida as are you as are Texas but what separated you tonight with Texas, yes. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah. But what is also an understatement is that your first ball contact yeah. in the serve and pass game, and we talked to Catherine about it a little bit, was absolutely on point. Did you know it was going to be that much of a foundation when you came into this group? Well, I, when I watched them on tape, um, I thought they could pass. And I'm like, we could pass. And so we didn't try to change that much. And uh, I thought we could get a little bit better at some things and get a little bit more system oriented than we have. And they've worked really hard. And, you know, Catherine needed to grow as a passer. And I think she, you know, yeah, last two nights yeah. she's done great. Um, but in general, they, you know, they're, they've worked hard to be good passers. And there was a foundation there, but they're continuing to grow. And Morgan, I thought, was lights out, yes. handling a lot of the court and did a great job. So let's just hope that continues as we move on to Kansas City. Earlier this season, you mentioned how you're learning them. And uh, you tell us that story about asking them some questions and you're getting very <laughs> different responses. Yeah. Well, uh, my, I like to talk about why when we train. Yeah. And um, so here's why we're doing it. I would say that here's why we're doing this. And then there'd be and you're used to not many questions. No, probably. like like oh okay. Well, what about this? And that's it. And these guys literally was 25 questions the first time. <laughs> and I saw Denise like going, oh, this is your first practice, and she's going, is this you gonna be okay with this? And I was just kind of like, like, this is great because then what happened after is that we jumped in there and they were all over it and it, it wasn't like we had to go back and say no no this is not what we talked about they were all over it it was and Catherine probably asked out of the 20 questions she probably asked 10 of them so and then they're close. emailing you articles yeah, yeah. And yeah well that was we did, <laughs> that, that was your other yeah that was a heart rate variability <laughs> yeah. thing and then i'm like hey this is cool we could do it on our it's a thing you could do on an app on your phone and loretta sent me articles about how it works on the app and <laughs> she copied great. me on those but it was right <laughs> yeah, over yeah, my head. Yeah. mine too but i'm just hanging in there all right let's talk about kansas city yeah. and your matchup with the florida gators who what a dramatic comeback i mean yeah. i don't know if you heard or saw but they were I down to it. usc nine five your thoughts on that matchup well i have watched them a little bit but i haven't watched them a ton i watched you know there's some wednesday night matches we got to watch and i watched the match today they're physical you know their two middles are what six to eight and then all of a might as well be 12 feet tall as high as she jumps and the way she plays and i think that the the, the tempo that they run and the things that they do are really good and but i need more time to really kind of dive into them and see what they're about but i was impressed and certainly they've had an incredible year i think they have one loss right so yes only they know the how to win yeah and so um i don't know we'll get to work tonight and then we'll see what we can figure out <laughs> earlier this year you talked about not wanting to depend too much on Catherine Plummer yeah. on your offense how did how do you feel like that's gone or you just <laughs> push the pedal down now that with, with well, at most there's only two, two more matches, matches. Yeah, well last <laughs> night last night we did a good job then she had 46 swings tonight and she was great and we yeah. needed her maybe maybe we need her because Loretta wasn't going and we got her going a little bit and we couldn't get to the middle uh, Tammy couldn't get going they were doing a nice job blocking Tammy and uh so I think we kind of needed it tonight. Kevin, congratulations. Thank you guys very On much. On your way to the national semifinals. Yeah, it'll be fun. Not the first time for you. No. It's the second time back in yeah. 2011 when you were at Illinois. Thanks so much for joining I us. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, see you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you so very much for joining us.
And once again, a reminder, Penn State, Nebraska, Stanford, and Texas. That's coming up at the Sprint Center in Kansas City. Coming up on the 14th on ESPN for the national semifinals. And then the finals will be on the 16th on ESPN2. A very, very convincing win. I'm trying to think back through the day, and Stanford was the only team that swept in the national, or I should say, in the regional finals. Well, Karch and I will be there next week, so be sure and join us for my partner, Karch Kirai. I'm Paul Sunderland saying so long from Palo Alto, Stanford over Texas, three sets to none. They're moving on. Coming up next is the Heisman Trophy presentation. Be sure to join us on Thursday, as I mentioned on ESPN. National semifinal between Nebraska and Penn State and Stanford and Florida. Good night, everybody.